Broadcasting from the Symphony Studio in Marietta, Georgia, it's time for the Technology Harmony Podcast. Brought to you by Symphony Technology Solutions. Tune in every week as we spotlight the very best minds in our industry. Now, here are your hosts. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Technology Harmony Podcast. Brought to you by Symphony Technology Solutions. I'm your host, the Social Media Marketing Manager here at Symphony, Katie Galley. In this series, we speak with and learn from the top thought leaders in the property technology space. In the Symphony studio with us today, we have CEO of Inside Access Control, Lee Odess. How are you doing, Lee? I'm great. Thank you. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. I'm super excited to dive in. And so, Lee, just to kind of get the ball rolling a little bit, I wonder, can you tell us a little bit about your professional journey and how you got the job that you have today? Sure, absolutely. I can do that. Uh, So, uh, I'd been in the technology space for about 20 years now. Uh, started off at Lutron Electronics in the lighting control side and then made my way uh, through a couple of places and then ended up uh, opening up my own integration firm with my wife in the DC area called Energy Lighting Control. Uh, we took that, uh, it was a residential light commercial uh, company here, uh, sold that to somebody and then we decided that uh, we didn't want to do that anymore. So <laughs> I went and joined Brevo, uh, who's a cloud-based access control provider. Yeah. Um, so I was there uh, marketing and we did enterprise sales and then we started something called Brevo Labs and we took that up to a sale and that, that was uh, that was fun. And I decided at that point that I wanted to go do something else. So mm-hmm. went down to Orlando and uh, started to work at a company called Unikey. Uh, worked there for a handful of years. We decided we didn't want to be in Orlando anymore. Uh, <laughs> so we moved back to DC and uh, worked for a Legion, uh, the lock company. So if you're familiar with the brands like Schlage and Kryptonite. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was there for a little bit. And then recently I left and opened up my own uh, business. It's called uh, Group 337, which is a consulting firm that we do. But I spend most of my time at Inside Access Control, which is a platform for the access control uh, industry. That's uh, I have a blog, a newsletter, we do podcasts. Um, we really just, we create content that is very specific to the access control industry. We believe that it is transforming. I mean, the COVID crisis has caused it to accelerate, right. um, but there was already starting to see some phase changes that were happening. And really, there wasn't a space to really talk about where things were going. So um, I, I'm looking to fill that void. And so, um, I mean, prior to the uh, COVID-19, I guess inside access control was already in existence, right? It was. Uh, so when I left, uh, I, I liked to write and I, in, in a lot of my positions, I've always been somewhat one foot in the in the past, if you would, and one foot in the future of where things are going. And um, I liked to write and I liked to talk about where those were going. So when I left Allegiant, I, I just started writing uh, and it sort of took off on itself and saw that there was an opportunity. So when that happened, I started Inside Access Control. I bought you know mics and lights and all this stuff to do this as to create content. Um, then COVID happened and ISC West uh, was uh, canceled. And I happened to, in a, like in January, was just doing a bunch of podcasts with people I knew from the industry. So I had about 20 podcasts already done and a bunch of articles written. So Next thing you know, I have content that seems to be relevant because people are now sitting like this more than they were out and talking to people. Right. Uh, and yeah, we formed a company and then happy to say that uh, the Security Industry Association sponsored it and um, it's, it's, it's taken off. So it's been wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I bet. I mean, clearly, like you said, with the current climate, it was it kind of um, gave it the way to take off completely. And so Lee then was inside access control then just something you started in tandem with group 337. You said you just liked putting the content out there. Did you have an aspiration to grow it into something or was it just you liked putting that content out there initially? Yeah, I I would say I started it as I believe the consulting side, I thought that's what I wanted to do full time. Mm -hmm. And this was a way to generate, uh, you know, to get noise out, frankly, and yeah. to really give our point of view. Um, probably a little bit similar to like what you all are doing, right? You're, you're creating this to create content, which um, people can digest and it's interesting. And then they find out more about your company and that. So I looked at it as a great way to, to take a message out. And if you look at our industry uh, up until this point, really YouTube and that wasn't really used. If they did, it was mainly to do training videos, but um, a lot of the social media sites our, our industry has kind of been asleep on. And there's a handful of people that, that use it. And uh, so I thought that'd be a good opportunity to separate myself. I uh, used LinkedIn heavily. 
I uh, use Twitter heavily. And I saw that as an opportunity really to, to do that, but it, it was intended to be that. So I now focus most of my time on the content creation uh, and, and providing that platform. Yeah. And I mean, it makes sense. I mean, you, you made that shift with the time. So what was coming up? And so now you get to really dive all in with this content creation. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, it, it's no lack of uh, opportunity. What, what I've come to find out when you do things like this, you know, you, you, you can spend a lot of time just creating stuff and you never know what's going to work. So I'll give you a good example. So out of this, uh, I created a, a, a tiered, I looked at the access control industry and I created a criteria that I thought is what's needed for who's going to be successful in the future. And then I'd looked at a hundred or so different companies and put their logos and tiers of people that I thought were, you're going to lead and you have an opportunity. You're kind of in the middle. You can either go either way. And you know, tier three was like, you got to get moving if you're going to do something. Otherwise this whole thing's going to fall apart for you. Um, and I just put that out on LinkedIn and it went viral and it sort of sparked uh, the opportunity now for a whole bunch of other uh, content to come out of it that has been really interesting. So, you know, you, you just keep trying these things and create, my belief is if I keep my head down, I create good content that people want to hear, bring in interesting people for them to talk about, um, have, have an, a, a little bit of an edge as far as a point of view, uh, and, and bring that to the market, like an opinion on stuff that, um, that is something that people are looking for, especially as end users are looking for, uh, buying decisions to be made or, dealers and integrators are looking for which brands to look for there there needs to be some i would say third party non influenced voices that can help kind of look through that for them and at least say hey here's what i see here's what i know here's some people judge for yourself and then make your decision so i think there's an opportunity there yeah absolutely and and so then lee i mean with diving all in now with inside access control do you see going into maybe other verticals or other areas of content or is access control going to be the primary focus no, it's funny you ask. Uh, yes, I, I can tell you we're, we're going to be moving into a couple that are that are coming soon. Hopefully next week uh, we'll have a, uh, a sister site that is uh, a, that's that's topical to what's currently going on now. And my, my intent was so if you read some books and things that are out there around, uh, you know, like the, the, they call it the, sort of like the tribe of how many people you need to follow. You, they say basically if you have like a thousand people that follow that content and like the content, especially in these niche markets like access control and, you know, whatever, whatever it might be. Um, you can, you can have a real, you could create a business, fr frankly, just focused on that and get real deep and real nerdy into things like access control. <laughs> yeah. So I tend to spend time there. And then the, there's overlap businesses that, so say like visitor management, for instance, kind of access control, kind of on its own, they work together uh, nowadays, really, I think visitor management is starting to become access control. Like, so you can see how they overlap, but can be separate. So the ability to create those types of things, I, I, I anticipate doing that where, where it makes sense. And frankly, having uh, decent self-awareness, at least, you know, if, uh, if I'm not an expert in it, I'm probably not going to talk about it. So um, <laughs> I'm curious, I may be curious and dig into it. But like a good example right now is like, I'm not going to create fever detection device .com. Like mm. that's for somebody else to go do. I'm interested in it. Like I look at it and, or biometrics, for instance, that's another one that's popular now. Like interested in it, it overlaps. I'll, I'll do it. But, but I, I that's not where I want to spend my time. So I'm going to go spend time where I want to go spend it. Right. And that makes sense. I mean, diving into one, the topics that you're most interested in, that you feel most comfortable putting content out there for, but then two, interestingly enough, like you said, where there's that overlap. So like you said, with visitor management. And so how do you see that overlap then with visitor management and access control? And what are you, I guess, what content are you looking to start putting out there in that similar vein? Yeah. So uh, I, I wrote an article recently uh, around that I believe visitor management is sort of the Trojan horse into the access control industry. And I actually believe that it is, if you were to look a, a year, two years, maybe three, whatever it might be, uh, down the road, it's actually, that is what access control is going to be. So in access control, visitor management's always been somewhat of an afterthought feature, really on the high end, uh, high security compliance side where you, you need to have good records. So people came in, they signed an NDA, or you had people on the other end that just wanted something cool at the front desk. They didn't want a clipboard. So like, oh, here, let me get an iPad and we can make this thing sort of look neater. Um, now though, with you see everything going with uh, COVID is the health now has sort of T-boned the industry 
to where there's now a workflow that's needing to come from this like pre-registration or when people come to a lobby, they sign in. Some people are doing temperature readings or whatever it might be. Right. Um, and in the access control industry though, the problem we had is the interfaces on the end were black boxes that had a blinky light and cards. You can't really do much NDA signing and registration with those. So what's happening now is, is these need for rich user, user interfaces to where people now have to interact with something. So I believe that you'll start to see access controls companies leaning, leading with these interfaces. Now, it may be that these visitor management systems start to get into the access control business. So now you have competition mm -hmm. or good partnership, or you'll start to see more access control companies come out like we've seen lately with their own visitor management system. So I think that is completely changing. So for me, the what, what needs to happen is there needs to be a redefinition of visitor management, number one. It's not actually what it is because now it's about employees. It's about visitors. It's about everybody that interacts with your space, right? So the visitor side is actually just one part of a much larger use case and stakeholders that are there. It's also not just about managing them. You know, there's things like notifications and I mean, just a whole lot of stuff. So there needs to be a redefinition of what actually visitor management is because actually then too, when you get into it, you come to find out like, how do you take building intelligence and compare them to Envoy and compare them to Traction Guest, compare them to who's on location? Um, you know, there, there's, a, there's a whole lot of people, proxy click, um, there's a whole bunch of people that are in that. And then as the access control companies come in, how are you going to know? So the ability to just be a sort of a third party that, that can bring that information out and then again, end users or whomever can make a decision that, yeah, this is the right fit for me, or at least make it part of their decision making process. Right. And so you're starting to see then, um, or you're able to see as kind of being within the access control space, but then to being able to curate all this information, see maybe the shifts that need to start being made on the back end as we're starting to, um, or as we're getting into the coronavirus, of course, but two is the shifts that need to start happening. Yeah. And, you know, I, I guess what I'd like to do is to create the, the place for those conversations to happen. Yeah. Not, not necessarily be, you know, it's not my opinion. Now, I'll give an opinion typically, but a lot of times it's to start the conversation. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what I would like to see more happen is critical thinking around this. Our industry, from an access control, and even secured the rest of them, like we bring hammers to every party. It doesn't matter. Like it's like we, we bring solutions and tools. We like to fix things. What there isn't a lot enough of, in my opinion, is conversation about, sort of the impacts and, you know, um, the, really the, the, the roadmaps of where the products are going. A lot of the companies from the manufacturing side that have been around for a while, they actually create the roadmaps based off of, you know, requests that came in from systems that have been around, our, you know, access control. The systems were built to be there for 30 years. So you have, you have uh, iteration a lot of times, not innovation, and the roadmaps are based off of that. So what I'd like to see happen is the introduction of conversation about, yeah, where trends are going so that people can build better roadmaps. Uh, the integrator contractors can maybe be more open to accepting newer technologies. Um, the end users uh, can get some awareness because, you know, having, we sell way too much like procs, for example, right? Like it's the worst kept secret in the industry. It's not secure. Yet, <laughs> Our entire industry is based off of security, but we get into these habits where we use the hammer everywhere we go, and I get it. It's hard to change, and you're moving fast. I'll, I'll like a bunch of excuses, whatever it might be, but there needs to be a place where you can have that critical conversation, and I, I would just like to start that. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, clearly, like you said, you are putting that platform out there. And so then in a, I guess, a perfect world or in Lee's world, how do you see those conversations starting? Or um, like you said, wanting to kind of prompt that, how do you see that going? And or hopefully, how do you see that going? Yeah, I, I mean, I started it on LinkedIn as a place to do it. Um, it's not the best tool for conversations to be had, um, <laughs> but it starts it's actually, it's better. Once, once people get into a rhythm with you that sort of they're, you know, that, that is a safe place to, to leave your opinion and you're not going to get, you know, into a, a, an, an online bar fight, then, <laughs> then people like are okay doing it. Um, I do the podcast, so have conversations with companies. Uh, you know, at some point I could see us moving into doing some in-person type stuff and we're all allowed to do that again. Uh, maybe small forms of that. Um, but 
you know, and I'm going to start rolling out like uh, YouTube live and that. So there could be a conversation. Um, I'm a fan of local regional trade shows and I think those will still be around and we'll do it there. Um, yeah. I mean, I just, I'd like to use all the tools if you would and let people uh, whatever vehicle that they want to use to communicate and express themselves. I don't care. It could be on Twitter. I mean, you could write letters, um, whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. I love that though. It's so it's kind of, you're starting that trend. You're bringing that content out there, but then it's so people can consume it in whatever fashion they want to. So just kind of trying to blanket the industry and put it out there on all your platforms so that people can consume it how they want. Yeah. For instance, like, so we do these videos and I'm guessing you put these on YouTube. Yes. Yeah. And then do you brought, do you take the audio and put them on uh, podcasts and, and do that? Or do you just, you focus on YouTube? The podcast is the next step, but YouTube is right yeah. now where we live. Yeah. No, that works. So, I mean, but that's a good example. So like, I'll take the audio from these types of things and there's tools out there like Anchor, if you've heard of them, which then take yeah. and they distribute the audio out and pot. So, you know, some people, they like to, they don't want to sit in front of a computer and, and watch. They want to listen to it. Um, I, I really, I, I don't care where they do it. I just want them to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, that's, that is really a great point, Lee. Um, well, Lee, so if someone wanted to get in touch with you further, of course, you said you're on LinkedIn and you're putting all this content out there, but if someone wanted to get in touch with you and really contact you, where might they do that? Sure. So uh, recommend going to insideaccesscontrol.com is a great place. A lot of content there. Like you said, LinkedIn, it's my first and last name. Um, and they can email me at Lee at group 337, the number three, three and seven.com. Um, they could even text me. I'm, I'm using that as a, a form of communication at 202-999-8180. Feel free to communicate if that's how you like to do it. Um, I answer and we can, we could form a relationship there and, and get to talking or Twitter, wherever really you could find me in, I'm not on Facebook. I'm not Instagram. But or I haven't I haven't jumped into TikTok yet, um, <laughs> but everywhere else, which I do think is a good place to that if I'm if I'm in your shoes and in my shoes and I know I speak and I should do it and I'm going to, but I think it's a great place to go to to start to to build that uh, audience uh, there. But anyways, I digress. Um, yeah, so any of those you can get a hold of me. What would an inside access control TikTok look like? That would be that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I, you know, I've been thinking about it. How I would actually, I think I would use it. Yeah. Is uh, I'm a big fan, and and I do a young professional uh, highlight every week. Uh, okay. So I, I interview somebody from the internet. I'd love to have you come do it. Um, <laughs> and they, it's a video. They answer five questions, uh, and I push it out. So for if it was me on inside, I would say. Off the top of my head, I thought about it a little bit, so not to be fair, um, yeah. would be that I would use it for helping recruit uh, young talent into the industry. So maybe it's about, you know, skill sets needed, just brief educations of what the industry is so people can get comfortable with who are the companies. I do stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. It's That's a platform specifically for, I guess, that younger generation. So, I mean, right now, go there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it, Facebook was that at one point, right? And then, right. you know, when everyone's moms got on it and dads got on it, all the young people are like, I'm out of here. I'm going to Snapchat. And then that's, you know, then people are like, all right, TikTok. So, you know, I, it's, I think, I think we... I, I don't. I think people don't use some of those things because number one, it just may not be at their thing, which is totally cool, and I get why people don't do it. There's probably some uh, they don't want to look stupid when they go on there, so there's some of that too, right? Yeah. Um. So you just stay away from it, and you say it's dumb, and like it's for the kids, and it's like, well, I actually think there's a place because if, if you got to go where the customers are at, and that's where the customers are, right? So go do it, and the worst thing that happens, you turn it off. Like I don't know. So right. what, what what bad could happen? Are you on TikTok? I am actually not on TikTok, but I have thought about it because I am. I was very curious when it started to boom, I guess, what exactly it was. But I saw the age range, I think is like 18 to 24. So it's on the, I'm, a, I'm 27, so I'm a little on the outside of it. All but right. I mean, I didn't even know what it was until I started to kind of see it take off. But it makes sense if you are like you're trying to reach millennials or a younger generation. It's even the generation before millennials, I guess, or after yeah. um, that it's targeted towards. So, but then if you want to attract them, then you have to be on the platforms that they're on. So, like you said, learning about all the platforms and putting the content out there in all these different ways so that that the audience trying to reach um, will consume it in the way they want to consume it. Yeah, and I guess too, if you're a local business that's looking to recruit local talent, mm -hmm. I got to believe it's a great way to go there to build relationships and, and at least get exposure. 
And plus, right now, there's not enough people on there that, you know, the, the competition for what you're probably doing is low. Mm-hmm. So if you invest some time in there, I think as it continues to grow, when by the time it does get, you know, big, you're already there. Thank you all for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. To learn more about our guest and their company, check out the show notes for the relevant links. If you would like to learn more about us here at Symphony, of course, subscribe to our podcast on our YouTube channel. And don't forget to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook at Symphony Technology Solutions and on Instagram at Symphony Tech Solutions. Here at Symphony, our ultimate goal is to make harmonious music out of all the technological noise. And we hope today's episode helped in doing just that. See you next time.